Hi, this is the first in a set of three videos to teach how to sniff Bluetooth low energy traffic. In the first video, we're going to talk about the hardware and software and install the software necessary to do that. In video two, we're actually going to look at some traffic uh, using a, a commercial off the shelf device and our smartphone. And then in part three, we're going to write code on the ESP32 to leverage the information that we learned to control the device without the phone. So to start off with, let's take a look at some of the software and hardware. Uh, the link, which I've included down below to the Nordic Semiconductor site, lists this NRF device. It's a 52840. They have both a development kit and a dongle. The one I purchased, I actually purchased online last year. And it looks like this. Um, so far, it's worked for me. Um, it does come from China. And it actually has the, as you will see, it's already preloaded with the Bluetooth firmware uh, necessary to, uh, to do this. So that's the one I'm using. However, I know for a fact DigiKey, uh, Newark, uh, maybe Mauser have these as well and if you just get the dongle I think you can even get it for like ten dollars in some places um, and I'll point out the step that we're gonna skip to uh, to install the firmware if it's not already on the dongle so using this site to follow some instructions you'll see that we have installing the NRF sniffer so let's click on that and you'll see that this is going to use Wireshark and Python and we're going to download some software also from Nordic. So let's get started. I'm going to click the Wireshark, and there you got the download button. Now I've already downloaded all of this for speed, so I'm going to go ahead and pull up my downloads folder, and there is Wireshark 3.4.3, which is the latest when I made this video. Double click it, and I'm going to basically just choose the defaults for the installation. and it starts installing. As you can see, I've downloaded the 64-bit version and I'm doing this installation on Windows 10 as 64-bit. All right, that's all there was to it. Let's go back to the instructions. It wants Python and it looks like the latest is 3.2. 9.2 so if we go to my downloads there it is now there is one thing you'll want to do when installing Python you really need to check this checkbox here add Python 3.9 to path what that's going to do is add it to your system path so that you can run Python applications without having to reference the location of the Python interpreter you'll see that that actually comes into play later during this installation so I check it, I click install now, I tell it it's okay to install, and it goes off to do the installation. Okay, I'm going to close it. Close the link, go back, and the next thing it says that we need to download the NRF sniffer for Bluetooth. It, it's called Sniffer Software. That's what it calls the folder, even though that's not the folder name. Anyway, here it is. I clicked the link, 3.10 NRF sniffer for Bluetooth. I'm, I went ahead and downloaded it and extracted it. And what I'm going to do is, um, let me show you. This is the zip file. I extracted it to this. And I'm actually going to copy that sniffer software onto my C drive from the root. So I click copy, I scroll down, and I'm just going to paste it. So we've done everything asked of us so far. So the next link says programming the NRF sniffer firmware. Now this is if you have a dongle that needs the firmware. Um, 
you can click on it and you can kind of see it's really not that difficult. It takes you through the process. Um, again, mine already had the firmware installed. So I'm going to skip that and I'm going to go to, let's see, click it again. I went back too far. Installing the NRF Sniffer Capture Tool. So we've got uh, Wireshark installed, we've got Python installed, and we download the Sniffer software from Nordic. So now what we need to do is go into the Sniffer software ext cap folder, external capture folder, and run this pip command. So I'm going to open up command window. I'm going to go to the root of my C drive. I'm going to go into the nrf folder that I copied over. I'm going to go into the ext cap directory and I'm going to paste that command in. This is why we wanted Python in our system path. It looks like it's gone and uh, downloaded uh, Py Python serial. Or I assume it's some kind of library for serial. Okay. And then what's the next thing? It wants us to open Wireshark and take a look at some directories. It wants us to look at these external capture paths so that we can copy the e the external capture folder into them. So let's go ahead and run Wireshark. Yep, let's go to help about and look at the folders. Now if you're being perceptive you're going to notice that the folders on this screenshot, uh, in the actual order of the of the uh, of the columns and stuff don't quite match, um, but you can figure it out. It's pretty obvious. So what we're going to do is this is the path for the uh, personal um, external capture. Now I have found by putting it in the personal it works. I've had issues putting the um, external capture information in the global one. So I'm going to copy, I right clicked, I'm going to copy that folder. I'm going to open up Explorer, I'm going to paste in that folder. Oh, it hasn't been created yet. So we're just going to go back one. Yep. And now what we're going to do is open another window and we're going to go into the NRF, the sniffer software. And this is the folder we want right there. So I'm going to go back, I'm going to grab that, copy, and paste it here. Okay, so what do we do? We went into the sniffer software and into the external capture. We ran the pip command. And now what we're doing is copying that folder from the sniffer directory into the Wireshark um, directory for, let's see, it was personal external capture path. Now what we need to do is run a batch file. So inside that path, let's go find it. Inside this path is going to be, we need to run a batch file. So I'm going to copy the path. I'm going to go back to my command window and I am going to cd into it. And I'm going to go into the capture directory under Wireshark, and there it is. So if we go back to the website, you can see this is the command it wants us to execute. Don't grab the period at the end of the sentence there. We're going to paste it in, hit enter, and it ran. And in fact, this kind of shows you what you can expect if it's working correctly. And that's pretty much what we got. So now, what we need to do is to refresh the capture interfaces in Wireshark. So I'm going to hit F5. I'm going to go into Capture Filters. I am going, let's close Wireshark and then let's reopen it and see if it makes a difference. Okay. Let's also plug in the NRF52840. So we can detect it and let's hit refresh again 
and there it is. Okay, so you need to make sure that you add the device. Plug in the dongle and press refresh and now you get the sniffer. So if we wanted to, we should be able to capture, what I did is I double click the sniffer and now we're actually capturing traffic. Let me do that again. I'm gonna stop this. Um, let me tell it to, um, let's see, open. Now let's go ahead and, and close it. Let's just go ahead and close the entire thing. You can actually, let's go ahead and close it. Yes, quit without saving. Let's go ahead and open it again. So there's Wireshark open. Now you see this by double clicking on this, it knows where this where the NRF 52840 device is on my machine. And when I click it, it's going to start capturing traffic. But there is one step that's very helpful, and that is you want to select the interfaces. So what we do is we go into Wireshark view. Uh, interfaces and we want to turn on the NRF sniffer interface. What that's going to do is you'll actually be able to see and easily filter some of the devices. So right now in my house there's probably a number of Bluetooth devices talking. If I double click this it will automatically start to capture the traffic that we're seeing. And if I open and see all advertised devices you can start to see what some of these devices are. Like there's my TV, uh, Sync, I don't know which one that one is. So there's a number of devices talking right now and broadcasting. There's probably my Apple TV just went by. Um, so yeah, so that's it. So now you should have all the software you need installed. You should have your dongle. And when we start um, episode two, we'll actually start looking at Wireshark looking at the traffic and reverse engineering some of the traffic for a commercial off-the-shelf device. With that, have fun and I'll see you in the next video.